Welcome to 3D Archery. Greg here. Alright, got a question for you. When someone says traditional archery, what's the first image that pops in your head? For many, that image is the longbow. From the myth of Robin Hood to the mythos of Agincourt, the longbow is intertwined with Western culture. I don't think anything is more associated with traditional archery in the West than the longbow. You know, for subscribers of this channel, you know that I am far from a longbow fan. I simply prefer recurves. You know, I don't think one's better than the other or worse than the other. I just prefer recurves for their look and feel. Needless to say, it came as a surprise to me when Eric from Hitman Archery asked if me to test and review this new longbow he has, you know, and he even admitted he was leery about doing it because he knows my views. I, I just don't like them. Don't want nothing to do with them. Don't hate them. They're just not for me. You know, and I thought about it. I said, Eric, you know what? I'll do that for you. What the heck? You know, and the reason I did it was because so far Eric hit men archery. He's had multiple hits right now from the wildly successful Black Hunter that's just taken archery by storm to the incredible Stealth Hunter, which I personally love, into last year's Viper, which is turning into another hit for him. You know, and the, the question is, what I wanted to see is, can the Plains Hunter be another hit for Hitman Archery, or would it be a miss? The Plains Hunter is a 62-inch reflex deflex longbow, available in draw lengths from 25 to 50 pounds in 5-pound increments. Mine was a 35-pound model, and it checked in at 34.95 pounds on the scale. When I first saw this bow, the first thing that jumped out to me was the gorgeous wood grain. Being a huge fan of wooden bows, I love the deep, rich colors of the Babinga wood, which contrasted perfectly with the darker colored rings in the grains. Add in the tasteful two-toned accent stripe that gently sweeps across the riser. The clear laminated limbs that display a gorgeous zebra wood underneath and the black vanillic tint protectors, I will say, this is one good looking bow. What surprised me is finding out that the good looking wood pattern that I like so much was in fact simulated. The riser is made out of diamond wood which is a layered manufactured wood that excels in strength and durability. That increased strength and durability means the sight window can be cut deeper and longer. On the Plains Hunter, that sight window is cut past center. And you know what that means? That's right, no Archer's Paradox. Not having Archer's Paradox means you can use a wider range of spined arrows, and those arrows will have an easier time leaving your bow due to the radius shelf. Assisting in that smooth release is a calf hair rest made by 3M. The thinness of that rest is perfect because it maintains that center cut in the riser. So it's nice to look at, but does it perform? Well, that is what I set to find out. Setting the bow up for me was fast and easy. With a recommended brace height of 6.5 to 7.5 inches, I found the 7 and a quarter inches to be my sweet spot. Now I set my bow up for 3D archery. That means a max range of 25 yards. And with just a little bit of playing around, I was able to get my point on at 20 to 25 yards. On the chronograph, the Plains Hunter, which uses bamboo cord limbs, consistently shot in the 180s. Now this was done using my Cross X Hurricane Octagons. They're 800 spine and they weigh in at a nice 290 grains. With the setup complete, it was now time to test it in the real world, as they say. Up first, it was time doing target archery. You know, long bows are not known as target bows, but as they say, nothing, and I mean nothing, would tell you more than that piece of paper downrange. Shooting a typical World Archery 300 round from 18 meters, the Plains Hunter is easy and smooth to draw, and I experienced zero stack. 
One thing I found was that the bow gave awesome feedback through the string. I was able to feel the smallest differences in tension in the bow and in the bow hand and in the string hand. And this really helped me to develop that final part of my shot sequence before the release. Because it communicated so well what was going on, I found the Plains Hunter to be a very easy to shoot bow. So much so, they could almost be called natural. I was able to score in the 230 to 240 range, and I know a 250 and 260 was well within range. With target archery done, I even took the Plain Hunter out to a field archery competition. Now out of my elements, and with shots out to 65 yards, I'll admit I struggled. But it was during this time that I really got to know the bow. Steady in the hand, stable at full draw, the Plains Hunter rewarded me with great shots when I did things right. My problem wasn't the bow, but rather the ranges being shot. I had a tough time finding something to put my arrow on. But the Plains Hunter proved to me, even at a low draw weight, and out to 65 yards, it could easily handle field archery. Then, of course, I did what I love, 3D archery. You know, the light 1.98 pound weight of this bow was perfect for all the different movements and the positions you encounter in 3D archery. The 62 inches of length also made it easy to move around in the thick undergrowth that is part of 3D archery here in Louisiana. The fast arrow speed really paid off here. With the Plains Hunter set up for a point on at 20, 25 yards. This allowed me to simply put the arrow on target or just below it, and focus on the shot. The Plains Hunter was in its element, and man, did it show. There was no shot on the various 3D courses I went to that I had a second thought about making. I knew that if I did what I was supposed to, I could make any shot. So with over two months worth of testing and tons and tons of shooting in all different environments and settings, I have a firm understanding of the Plains Hunter. And here are my hits and misses. All right, everybody, there you have it. Hits and misses time, right? First up is the hits. So what are my hits? Well, performance. This thing can perform. It is fast. Right? Mine's pumping out. Once I started with 180, but after I got it, my form settled down, I was at 185 feet per second, 34 pound bow with a 290 grain arrow, but that thing is cooking. It is stable in the hands, right? It is smooth to draw. It doesn't fight you. You can sit there full draw and not have it try to massively collapse in you. And most importantly, this baby's accurate. When I do my stuff right, I'm looking, I don't have to think, and my arrows go right where they need to go. The other thing is the weight. At under two pounds, this thing is light. Easily transportable. I know some people like heavier bows for target accuracy, but we're talking 3D hunting and things like that. So the light weight is a big benefit. It's also the size. It's 62 inches. This baby's maneuverable, man. I had no problem. You know what? I could throw it in my car, walk through the brush, do all the things with it really easy. So this bow is just an all-around winner, right? So up next is the misses. So it's gotta be something wrong with it, right? Well, if the first miss is the string. The factory string is not the greatest. And just lucky for me, I had an extra string that fit this bow from Eric. And I'm telling you, bow is fine, then it got better. So if you can, I would highly suggest either have Eric make you a string or have somebody else make you a string. And the final one, I don't know if this is going to be real or not, but there's a slight, I wouldn't call it flaw in urban perfection, but on the riser, there's an area where they put a lighter piece of wood and it just, it just doesn't look proper. It doesn't look right. It just throws the whole thing off. Now, mine is a pre-production bow, so hopefully they will fix this. Right? And if they do, it just leaves that one thing, the string. All right, everybody, there you have it. That's everything. So what's my final thoughts, right? What do, you, what do you really think, Greg? Well, I'll tell you what. The Plains Hunter, it's an incredible bow. It is, as they say, the total package. It, 
I have to say, it hasn't converted me over to longbows. Sorry, everybody. No, that's just not going to happen. But it has impressed me with its performance, its stability, and how easy it is to shoot. Now, I firmly believe the Plains Hunter is not only a fantastic value, but it's just a flat-out fantastic bow. And it's a bow that archers of all skill levels would enjoy. I love it. I'm going to keep it. And you will be seeing me shooting it from time to time. Ain't going to convert over. Still love my recurves. All right? Don't forget to check out the website where you can find out different archery ranges, 3D courses, clubs, um, tournaments, organizing bodies, festivals, product views like this one, and of course, targets by me, 3D Archery. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time, and hopefully on 3D course with 3D Archery.